In the last couple of years, the tech world has been dominated by AI. The whole discussion around AI and all of this great new technology that's springing up that is quite literally changing the world, right? You're seeing major disruptions in certain industries of the market. You're, you, really, AI is changing everything. It's going to be a situation where here in just a few years, it'll be like a totally different thing. You'll remember the world before AI and the world after AI, very much like those of us that lived before the internet and then after the internet, right? Two totally different worlds. And one of the really cool things that I have been playing around with here in the last couple of days is GPT for all. What is this? This is a free to use locally running privacy aware chat bot. No GPU or internet is required to run this thing. You get a little screenshot here. Uh, this website, by the way, is GPT for all.io. And this particular chat client is available for Windows, Mac OS 10 and the Ubuntu installer, which I believe if I click on it, I haven't tried this. It's just a, a run file. So it's basically an executable file. I'm assuming it probably would run on pretty much any Linux distribution. I actually didn't try to install and run that particular file because I found GPT for all available on the Arch AUR, and that's how I installed it. I also did search for GPT for all over on FlatHub, and it is available as a flat pack. Again, I didn't try the flat pack version, so I'm not sure if it, it works correctly or not, but it is packaged over on FlatHub. If you want to take a look at the source code for GPT for all, it is free software. It is licensed under the MIT license, and that's really why I wanted to check it out is because, first of all, this is a piece of free and open source software. The other thing is it has a variety of models you can use for this AI chat assistance, including you have the ability to actually use some open source models such as Llama from Meta. So let me show you GPT for all in action. Let me switch to an empty workspace and let me do a search for GPT for all and let me launch it. Now, the very first time you launch it, you don't have any models loaded. So you actually have to download models locally to your machine because remember, no internet is required for this. So these um, language models, they're gonna be downloaded to your machine. So if I actually click on this, this window will open up as soon as you launch GPT for all for the very first time because you need to have at least one of these models downloaded and installed. All you need to do is just click the button, right? So for me, I was gonna use the uh, open source Llama 3 by Meta, and all I needed to do was click the download button here, and it took probably two or three minutes to actually download that, and then once it's downloaded, then I could begin a new chat and you can see you got this little sidebar here. You can actually tick the sidebar on and off. But if you want to save these chats, which you probably do, I'm going to label this one. If I get in here, we'll do first chat. We need to choose at least one of these models to use. So if I go to the menu, I've only got llama here installed. So let me go ahead and choose that. And now I could go ahead and send a message. I could ask it a question. For example, list all mammals alphabetically. I know that font is kind of small, but this might be a, a large output, so I wanted to make sure you guys can see it. It says, what a massive task. Here is a list of mammals in alphabetical order. And I know it's gonna be a massive task because I believe there's actually several thousand mammals. So this is going to take a while. You can see it's typing rather slowly. I mean, if this was something that only had 10 responses, you know, it'd be over right about now. But I know, again, this would be a very large amount of output. It's going to spit out. So I'm actually going to stop it from generating. We're already into the Bs. Yeah, we're just barely into the Bs. So it's going by common name alphabetically. Let me actually make the text a little bigger. So if I move my head out of the way, if I go to the settings here and I go to application, you have font size, small. Let me make that medium. I think that'll be a little bigger. You also have themes. So I have dark set. That's the default. That's the way it ships. But there is a light theme. If you prefer a light theme, there is a legacy dark theme, which honestly looks pretty good. It's more of a black and gray with some purple highlights, which I quite like, kind of almost like the uh, Dracula color scheme. But I'm going to go with the default dark theme for now. And I'm going to go ahead and close that. Also, actually, let me go back to the settings. One other thing you need to do if you're using CPU, which I am, you can set the number of threads 
for your CPU. For me, I'm using six threads. Now I have a 12 core, 24 thread thread ripper. I'm only using six threads, but you know, my CPU is still kind of a beefy CPU, even though it's an older CPU, it's kind of a monster. But by default, GPT for all was set to only use four threads. And I bumped that up a little bit because I thought four threads was limiting a little bit. Now you, you are going to need a real machine to actually use this, you know, it needs to be at least something reasonably modern. But in my little bit of time experimenting with this, uh, it, it was especially with Llama 3 here, the answers are actually pretty good. It's got all the, the standard stuff you would expect it to be able to do if you want it to help you with your programming and scripting, it can do that. For example, give me an example, if I can type an example of a for loop in bash and it's processing and here is an example of a for loop in bash and it's actually going to give me the code. I notice it uses the standard shebang slash bin slash bash instead of the more conventional uh, slash user bin env bash which is but you know, <laughs> I'm not going to dock it any points for that. So what's cool about asking for examples of scripting and programming, it gave me the code and then it explains what's happening. So it's going to explain e each line of the code. So that's kind of cool. Let me stop generating. Let's ask it for something a little more complex. Give me an example of recursion in Haskell. Now, what are the odds that it's going to be able to handle this? I'm not sure. I actually haven't <laughs> done this before, but it looks like it's going to do it just fine. It's going to give me the factorial function in Haskell, which is a recursive function, yeah, and it gives me its definition. And now it's going to break it down and tell me exactly what each of these lines are in Haskell. Very cool. Let's ask it to break down a really complex subject, but do it in simple terms, layman terms. How about, tell me about AI like I'm a five year old. Let's see if it can handle that. Oh, I like this. Oh boy, AI is so cool, all caps, exclamation point. So almost like it's talking to a child. And it explains AI in really simple terms. Wow, I I even this first sentence. So you know how humans can think and learn new things? If someone teaches you the alphabet, of course, like I'm a five year old, someone teaches you the alphabet, you can remember all the letters to spell the words. This is very cool. You know, these chat assistants have gotten a lot better since I tried them. Uh, when they first came out, they were especially bad. Um, but this is actually really explaining this like I'm a kid. Let's ask it to do something more creative. So let me stop generating that last response. Let me tell it to write me a haiku using the words AI. So I'm gonna ask the AI to write a haiku about AI. And let's see what it comes up with. Mental mind awakes, AI's digital dreams dance, intelligence born. That's actually a pretty good AI. That is actually not bad for a computer generated poem. Anyway, I could play with this thing all day and I may play with this thing all day, but I'm not gonna sit here uh, on camera. I really just wanted to make this very short video about this really cool piece of free and open source software, GPT for all. Again, it's available on Windows, Mac, Linux, so it's cross-platform on Linux. There is an installer that should work on Ubuntu and Debian, but that installer probably works on most Linux distributions. If for some reason it doesn't work on your machine, there is a flat pack available on Flathub for those of you on Arch Linux or an Arch based Linux distribution, GPT for all is available in the AUR. I think there's also a chaotic AUR build for those of you that have the chaotic AUR enabled. Now, before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of this episode, Matt, James, Steve, Warmer, Dragon, Darloff, Daedalus, GDR, George, Lee, Matthew, Methos, Erion, Paul, Peace, Arch, and Fedora, Realities for Less, Red Prophet, Roland, Solastri, Tenren, War, Gentoo, and Ubuntu, and Willie. These guys, they're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this quick look at GPT for all would not have been possible. The show's also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're seeing on the screen right now. These are all my supporters over on Patreon. I don't have any corporate sponsors. I'm sponsored by you guys, the community. If you like my work and want to see more videos about Linux and free and open source software like GPT for all, subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. Peace, guys.